Hello, and welcome back to another video. I hope you're well. Um, yeah, this week we're doing my physical Xbox Live Arcade games. So, unfortunately for us all, the Xbox Live Arcade shut down a couple weeks ago. And I thought it'd be kind of prudent to go over a lot of the games I have um, physically that were on the Xbox Live Marketplace. Um, there were, there are a few. There are, <laughs> there are more than a few. There are a fair number. Uh, a lot of these are quite precious to me. Others were just kind of in passing, really. Um, but yeah, I'll start with some honorary mentions. So um, back in the day, at the kind of launch of the Xbox Live uh, Marketplace for the 360 or Xbox Live Arcade, uh, as it used to be, they released um, a series of original Xbox games that had launched throughout 2006 onto the service to download. Um, the most famous of these being Psychonauts. Now, I didn't play Psychonauts there. I didn't end up getting it there either because I, well, I waited. I waited a couple of years, got this for about £10, and you know what? It's, it's still one of my favourite Double Fine games. Not my favourite... We know what that is. It's 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 the big one. It's the big favourite game. It's the brutal legend. Of course it is. But um, Psychonauts 1 is an extremely, extremely good game. I then went on to buy pretty much everything they launched on Xbox 360. Uh, especially on the marketplace they did. Costume Quest 1 and 2. Those games are brilliant. Uh, if they want to do a physical release of them with limited run, I'll be first in line. They're amazing. Um, stacking. Stacking's very cool. It's a very cool little kind of... It's like a point and click, but you're playing as Russian uh, Matryoshka dolls. Or oh, Russian nesting dolls, if you want to call them that. Um, yeah, they're cool. They're extremely cool. They're very, very cool. But, um, yeah, it, it's, a, it's a very solid little game. The one I probably put the most time into that wasn't Brutal Legend was Iron Brigade, where you play as a series of, like, World War One mechs fighting against these aliens made of TV. And I know, sounds weird. Um, but yeah, very solid lineup from uh, from Double Fine on the Xbox Live Marketplace. They also had uh, Happy Action Theatre, which I never got because it was out for like two weeks and then it was gone. And then they had um, Connect Party, which I did buy. <laughs> I did buy the full game recently and it is dog shit. No, nah, it's not bad. But um, considering I got a brand new Connect, I say brand new, it's like, two pounds uh, from a charity shop I might give it a go again but we'll see there were two other games on there uh, on those of those original Xbox games like Psychonauts that really caught my eye first was Raises Hell Raises Hell is a fucking weird game it's basically what would happen if you took um Oddworld and mashed it together with Happy Tree Friends it's bizarre it doesn't play very well and I think I talked a bit about it in my Majesco video, if I ended up doing that Majesco video. You know, I can't remember. That's bad. I should do it, if I have it. But yeah, I quite like I quite like that game. I finished it. Those games are amazing with cheats, and uh, Raise as Hell is no exception. The final one is my third favourite game of all time, Stops the Zombie. I love this game. Boulder Punch did a video uh, on it recently, about 33 minutes of talking about Stubbs eating people's brains in a somewhat dated, but you know what, extremely fun and extremely unique, um, extremely unique game, but that's besides the point. So those were the Xbox originals. Everything else I've got here is a physical release of a game that came out on the Switch, uh, not the Switch, on the Xbox 360 Marketplace. So, I guess I'll just start with some of the re-releases. So, there were quite a number. You know what? There were quite a number of Sega Saturn releases. That was quite strange. Um, a lot of games that were on Sega Saturn back in the day got physical releases, uh, well, got digital releases on the uh, on the Xbox Live Marketplace, uh, including Knights. So, Knights into Dreams, very solid and very solid game. Not my personal favourite. Uh, a friend of mine really, really likes Knights. Completely obsessed with it. And they released a combo pack. Um, it was a combination of Knights and Christmas Knights on the same uh, on the same cartridge. Oh, well, not on the same cartridge, but on the same download file. Which was cool. Graphics look really good. It was, I think, based on the PS2 version. 
um, from back of the day, the Sega Ages 2000 one. I've only got one of those games, which is, I want to say Panzer Dragoon. Um, I am in the process of maybe getting more. They're very expensive, but we'll see. Uh, what can I say about Knights? It's fine. It's fine. I, there were better there were better games on there um, that I liked more. Um, specifically, there were things like, um, well, there were things like Jet Set Radio. Jet Set Radio is a lot of fun. It's not my go-to when it comes to playing, um, when it comes to playing games of this ilk. Um, I prefer Jet Set Radio Future. I think it's a much better game. But yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's fine. It's fine. Sorry for the cut there. I had to grab something. Uh, from the shelving, but um, yeah, just a radio, just a radio feature is probably one of my favorite original Xbox games. But Jet Set Radio original is just kind of okay. I mean, I, uh, that's where I first played it. I first played it on the 360, and then I went and found that copy a couple years later for like three quid. <laughs> Wasn't that nice when you could get games for cheap? Um, it's not my favorite Dreamcast game on there though. That would be Virtual. On. I really like Virtual. On. I really like Virtual on Ontario program. I think it's really cool. Got the original on Saturn. And about there is the giant controller uh, that they put together for the original. But the first time I played Virtual, much like most of these games, especially for Sega, was on the Xbox Live Marketplace. I mean, it was such a fucking cool platform for having just really cool games on it. And unfortunately, they're all gone now. <laughs> all those games are gone. Uh, unless you got a modded Xbox, which uh, maybe down the line. But um, yeah, I'd recommend Ontario Program. I don't have the original uh, release. This is a this is a re reproduction copy, simply because I didn't own. Which is weird, because the back of that reproduction copy says, "If you own a Dreamcast, you must buy this game." Um, I am planning on getting it. I'm planning on getting all of the uh, Virtual On games. I know there was Virtual On Four. I think that was the last one in Japan. Um, weirdly enough, on 360, and it's region free. So the fact I don't own it is baffling. <laughs> it's baffling um, that I don't own that game yet. But it's on my list, and uh, I will be getting it. Okay. Um, Saturn. The Sega Saturn. The Sega Saturn. That was a weird console to be on there. Very strange. But not under any circumstances unwell. Especially when it gave us such absolute fucking classics as Virtua Fighter 2. Easily my favourite Virtua Fighter game. Um, outside of maybe Fighters Mega Mix, if we count that. But Virtua Fighter 2 is, again, my first introduction to the Saturn was actually through the Xbox Live Marketplace. So much of my childhood, or teenagers, certainly, before getting into retro collecting as much as I have, were really shaped by that thing, especially because it gave me a cheap way to play games like this. I mean, admittedly, this was three pounds back in 2012. But yeah, solid, excellent, excellent platform. So fucking good. So many good games, including stuff like Fighting Vipers. Now, this is a ratty ass copy of Fighting Vipers, which is why it was 12 pounds. But again, two exceptionally, exceptionally good um, fighting games. Now, I'm not big on fighting games. I've played them a bit with people uh, on that platform. We'll get to my favourite one in a bit <laughs> on the Xbox Live uh, arcade. But, um, yeah, it also led me down the path of treasure. Now, I'd already been the path, down the path of treasure as a developer um, with Wario World. Um, I grew up on that game, weirdly enough. I know a lot of people's platformers back in the day were like, I played Spyro and I played Crash. And I'm sat again. I played Sonic Adventure 2 and I played Wario World. But... The Xbox Live Marketplace also introduced me to Guardian Heroes. Now, that version of Guardian Heroes is amazing. I've played, like, I don't know, I'd say 50 hours of it, and I'm still shit at it, and I still haven't barely unlocked anybody, and I think it's because I'm shit at it. But, yeah, I love this game. I think it's absolutely amazing. That's where I first played it, and then as a result, down the line, um, about a year, actually, about a year down the line, I went to uh, Comic-Con, don't really go to Comic-Con anymore, it's too expensive, when all I really go for is to buy retro games. I could go to a shop for that. Um, 50 quid. 50 pounds. 50 quid. And it was so worth it. <laughs> so 100% worth it. Excellent fucking game. Need to play more of it. Really do. Especially with the Polymega. Especially with the Polymega. Need to be playing uh, Guardian Heroes considerably more. 
Saturn was the only platform that had some representation. We got N64 games. Specifically uh, two that I played. Um, there was a third one, I think. And there might have been another, but I can't for the life of me remember what it is. But I'll start with the first one. I'm not a huge fan of Banjo-Kazooie. I'm not. Um, I think I'm not much of a collected on platformer kind of guy. But Banjo-Kazooie is an extremely exceptional game. And what unfortunately rare... Rare got done bad um, by Microsoft. I'm not going to pretend that they didn't. They've been butchered horribly. About the only thing they're producing nowadays is Sea of Thieves, which can die in a hole. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, I'm not into I'm not into that type of game as a service. I don't play games as a service. I abjectly refuse. And the fact that we got some really solid titles like Cameo and all of that out of it means that unfortunately they're now dead in that respect. Um, they're gone because they they made a bunch of sort of shit games like Nuts and Bolts and Perfect Dark and Cameo, as much as I love Cameo. And then they were kind of shoved into the Connect aisle for a while. Um, even if even after releasing stuff like Perfect Dark on the Xbox Live Marketplace. Again, my first introduction to Perfect Dark. My first introduction to Perfect Dark was on there. I love that game. I love this game. It's so fucking good. But did we get any more of that until recently? No. And even the new one isn't developed by Rare. <laughs> it's not developed by Rare. It, it's developed by some third party. It's not continuing the plot of the original. It's not continuing the plot of the prequel. Nothing. It's just a complete reboot. And quite frankly, I'm not that interested. So, uh, if you want to play these games, uh, especially the arcade ports, play it on Rare Replay. That's all I can really say. But this was about the best thing that Rare have put out in about nearly 20 years. <laughs> Which is disgusting, but here we are. Um, I'm a big Sonic fan. If you didn't know, if you couldn't tell, if you couldn't tell by all the Sonic figures down here... I'm a big Sonic fan, and so I had about eight games of Sonic, something like that, on the Xbox Live Marketplace. Uh, that includes Sonic 2. Um, it's fine. It was like a quid. So I bought it um, with just some spare Microsoft points, if you remember those <laughs> from back in the day. They're hot garbage. They are hot garbage. Um, they were hot garbage, and it was impossible to tell how much anything was actually worth in terms of monetary value. It just wasn't worth it. Um, that being said, we did get some doozies like Sonic Adventure 2, uh, sorry, Sonic Adventure 2 and Sonic Adventure 1. Um, my favourite one, easily. Import the DLC that gives you all the battle content for the multiplayer, which is very cool. <laughs> I like this game. Um, it, it, it's easily my favourite platformer of all time, bar none. Um, it's just very, very, very good. Very, very good. Heartily recommend play Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic Adventure 1 is, is its own kettle of fish. Um, I think both ports were based on the DX version or the GameCube release. Um, I think that's the case for all ports now um, of Sonic Adventure. They're all, they're not uh, Dreamcast native, they're all GameCube native. But yeah, they're, um, they're very solid. They're very solid 3D platformers. They're probably the best Sonic Wars up until Frontiers. And even I think Frontiers is mainly okay. Um, I wouldn't play it again. Um, to be honest, I played it once. I will probably never play it again. It, it was merely okay. That being said, we did get some others on the Xbox Live Marketplace. Specifically, we got Sonic CD, which is cool. But we got Sonic the Fighters. Now, I didn't own Sonic the Fighters on Xbox Live Marketplace for quite some time. Largely because I had it here. I had it in the Gems Collection. That was all I really needed. Then I went, you know what, the store's shutting down, that's not going, that's not being ported to anything else. I really like that game, let's buy it. <laughs> so I did. It was like £3.50, I think, which is totally worth it. One of the last few uh, Sega games that are still on there. I mean, um, I think Knights have been pulled, and same with Jetset Radio. They've been pulled like a couple years ago, which kind of sucks. A lot of games on my hard drive now. Uh, that are just gone. They're completely gone. Which sucks. But here we are. Um, yeah, it, it's shitty, but these things happen. Um, yeah. But Sonic the Fighters, uh, garbage, hot garbage, hot, hot steaming garbage, but I fucking love it. It's so much fun. <laughs> it's, it's really, really good. It's a very, very solid, um, very solid 
um, fighting game, but it is so shit. <laughs> it's so fucking bad. But it's 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 fun bad. You know, it it's fun terrible. It's great for what it is. It's this early polygonal looking like crap video game that plays like shit. It's borderline impossible to control anybody and I fell in love with it much like I did Sonic R. So this was the best ten quid I've spent on the GameCube ever, quite frankly. Um but yeah. Okay, that's all the re-releases. That's all the re-releases. Uh or arcade port in one case. But yeah. The rest of these are actual releases for the Xbox 360 marketplace that I have to have physically. So we'll get on. we'll start with the collections and we'll just start with the two worms ones because there's some crossover. This has Worms Armageddon and it has Worms Revolution, which is cool. Um I'm not big on worms. I never really have been. I know Team 17 have been around forever and the, kind of their biggest success has been the Worms series. Um, this one's cool. It's got the original. It's got Ultimate Mayhem, which is 3D. Apparently, I'm not sure if that was in re I'm not sure if that was a sixth gen release, but um, would surprise me. And it has Worms 2, which is great. I think personally, this is the better one than this. This only really gives you. This only really gives you Worms Revolution. Um, I mean, if you've got this already, mm, not really worth it. Not not terrible games. Um, I'm not a big Worms fan. Never have been. Never will be, to be fair. Um, no, no Worms game has ever made me go, yes, I must play this a thousand times. And that's with me buying the original uh, this prior weekend. So, yeah. But, not the worst Xbox Live game I've played. Uh, I just got the camera. That's helpful. That'll probably go to something like Feeding Frenzy or Luxor 2. Um, I, I popped this in once. Uh, this arcade co compilation dip. Popped in once, and quite frankly, it's shit. <laughs> All the games on it are shit. There was a better one, which was this. Um, Xbox Arcade Unplugged, um, Volume 1. Would have been nice if they'd released this more often. I mean, you got stuff like Bejeweled 2, that's cool. Uh, Wick Fable of Souls, um, Outpost Kalioki X, and uh, Geometry Wars, which is awesome. These are all very cool Xbox Live games, and it had a fucking Xbox Live month long membership code that's not been used. So maybe I will plug, I will give that to my wife to use on her Xbox One. But we'll see. Yeah, these compilation titles were, were okay. I know there's a third one that I don't have. I've been meaning to get it, but a lot of these, a lot of these compilations are fucking expensive now. They're so expensive, especially with the, especially with the arcade down. Um, you can't buy these games anymore. And because they're gone, there it is. Um, that being said, some of them are okay. Um, this one, we've got Namco Museum Virtual Arcade. I'm a big Pac-Man fan. I didn't own Pac-Man um, Championship Edition. Or Mr. Driller Online or Galaga Legions. I thought this would be kind of cool. It's fine. It's fine. It's perfectly fine. There's only really six... Um, arcade titles on here. The rest are just ports. Um, the rest are just ports of like old Namco games like Xevious and Dig Dug and shit like that. Miss Pac-Man's on here, I think. Not really worth it, to be fair. Um, it's probably one of the few ways you could play Pac-Man on a more modern... Uh, Miss Pac-Man on a more modern system. But then again, I'm not sure if this is actually backwards compatible. I think that's a German copy, uh, which is very weird. But uh, yeah. Dein ganz persönlich Spielhalle. And I am apologizing for that terrible pronunciation. Um, it's fine. A lot, you have to bear in mind, a lot of these arcade games are either ports of stuff I really liked already or ended up really liking one of the systems. Well, they're just not the kind of games that I typically play. Um, my, some of my favorite games on the Xbox Live Arcade have never been released physically. Um, there was Abyss Odyssey by um ace team that was really cool rock of ages one i know rock of ages three got a physical release a few years ago i don't like it as much as the original um xena clash 2 that's never had a physical release which sucks because that game is amazing um other games like section 8 prejudice i mean time gate released the original back in 2009 i bought it i was like oh my god it's really good it's really cool really solid game 
Um, might do a video on uh, some of the terrible shooters I've played on the Xbox 360 uh, over the span of my life. Underappreciated. In fact, I've got a fat stack sitting down there. So that might be the next video. Um, I've been planning it for a while and it's kind of cannibalized my, uh, my 360 shelf. Because of course it has. But um, speaking of shooters, like, like, like self-actor psychokinetic wars, that never got released physically. So many games just lost to time. Um, I'm surprised I found one of them that I'll get to in a minute. But yeah, we'll see. Serious Sam. Serious Sam. The Serious Sam collection. Uh, the only way to own Serious Sam 3 physically, which is dumb. Uh, it has the Jewel of the Nile DLC, which is also shit. Um, and it has, but it had Double D XXL, uh, which is kind of a side-scrolling um, shoot 'em up where you can stack guns on top of each other. It, it's insane. It's such a bonkers. It's such a bonkers game. Um, as well as First Encounter and Second Encounter. Now I have First and Second Encounter already, so I'm probably just trying that in. But I wanted to get this strictly for Serious Sam Three. I remember that game being a big deal back in the day. Um, back in the day on the 360 specifically. It was a big deal that it was coming out digitally only. People were like, oh, why is this digitally only? It could be physical, blah, blah, blah. Nowadays, you get that left, right, and center. Um, I'm wishing stuff like Kanetsugami, um, Path of the Goddess by Capcom was getting a physical release, but uh, not yet. So I'm putting off buying it um, just in case they announce anything, but doubt it. Uh, we're kind of getting past the days of physical media, um, or at least, you know, for games consoles, which is great. That's fine. Um, maybe we'll move towards a more DVD format with them. That'd be cool. Hell yeah. I'd be all over that. Like, just multiple. Like, they can play everything. <laughs> be alright. That'd be good. Um, but yeah, Serious Sam. Serious Sam is, uh, is a tricky series for me. I, I've owned most of them. Or at least most of the mainline ones. I haven't owned four yet. That's been on my list. But I played three. I think it's awful. I think three is is easily the worst in the series. Um, I thought one and two encounters were okay. I thought two, uh, Serious Sam 2 was actually fun, if really fucking long. It was like 10, 15 hours. It was insane. And I still haven't bothered to finish it because it's boring. <laughs> And that's the problem with Serious Sam for me. It's a it's a fucking boring franchise. Um, if you want to know more about Serious Sam as, as a series, go and watch Frame Rater. That guy is constantly fucking editing his channel and getting rid of videos on it. And I wish he wouldn't because I found him by talking about Raises Hell. Or for him talking about Raises Hell. And I really like his content. I just wish he'd stop remembering it. But he did a very good critique of Serious Sam 3 as well as a uh, first and second encounter. Um, go watch them. Pretty solid. Moving on, the final compilation disc. Uh, this one is kind of the reason why I've refilmed this video. Um, <laughs> as well as the Serious Sound Collection. I got this, uh, not last weekend, but the weekend prior. I also picked up this, which was very cool. Trials HD, easily the most popular arcade game on there, apart from maybe Minecraft. Minecraft was huge. Trials HD was very very close. <laughs> very, very close behind. Um, but this had a very cool... This was a very cool triple pack. Um, there is one other triple pack I want to get by Ubisoft that has Beyond Good and Evil 2 HD. And I know that there was a 20th anniversary release recently. Don't really care. But um, that there was... From Dust. Now, From Dust is a really interesting game for me. It's kind of a god game created by Eric Chahi. He's the guy behind Another World and Paper Beast. Um, he also made From Dust. Very fucking good games. Completely insane. The guy drops in like maybe once a decade, makes a new game and then disappears again. I don't get it. <laughs> like he came in and went, I've made Another World, bye. And then he came back and went, I've made From Dust. Bye. And then he disappeared again. Now he, now he's back going, I've made Paper Beast. Bye. And he just, yeah, he just disappears. Really cool guy. Uh, seems really nice. Love, love to own anything signed by him. I'd love to just be 
able to get in contact with Eric Charhi and be like, hi, I'm a huge fan of your work. I absolutely fucking loved From Dust. It was flat out one of my favourite arcade releases of that year. But if you could, if you could sign the case, that would be nice. <laughs> But these games are okay. Uh, I've not been too big on Charles HD. Limbo, though. Limbo I did own. Um, not so much Mr. Splo... Uh, not so much Splosion Man. I know there was Miss Splosion Man as well. But Limbo... Limbo's a cool game. It's very atmospheric. It's the same guys who made Inside. Um, I've also got this cool physical edition for the PC, which has, like, soundtrack. It's got these fucking... It's got 3D capabilities, this version. It's PC which is fine. Um, yeah, loads of stuff. Sticker of the boy's head. 3D glasses, which give me eye ache. Just, yeah, everything. Soundtrack, very cool. There we go. And looking through these is awful. But yeah, it's a cool, it's a cool game. It's a very cool game. It's just a lot of fun. Um, miserable. <laughs> it's miserable. Um, but that's kind of the, sometimes that's the kind of vibe you want when you're playing a game. You just want something that's sad or depressing. Um, it's why, uh, it's why we all play Last of Us 1. Um, not the second one, the second one is shit. It's shit. Not down that hill. Last of Us 2 is garbage. I haven't even played it and I don't want to. It's just fucking crap. But yeah, Limbo's a really solid game. But since I've showed you that, we'll get on to the final, the final, the final... Final bit. The final bit. The final home front for this, which is my physical releases of individual games. It's only about eight, and obviously we've done Limbo. Next up, Xenoclash. Um, as I said, Xenoclash 2 never got re-release. Physically. Which is dumb. And I've kind of fallen off with Ace Team over the years. They like Their last Xenoclash game was fucking shit. Um, cl artifacts. Cl Clash Artifacts of Chaos. Just fuck off. <laughs> Awful, awful, miserable game. Fucking hot garbage. The original two, though, amazing. First person brawlers, weird as balls. Uh, doesn't follow that fucking Souls like trend that everybody is fucking doing. And more importantly, we're actually fucking playable, unlike fucking Clash. Um, Xena Clash 1, very solid game. Uh, not as good as 2. I think 2 was the peak of those three. But um, yeah. That never got this great. Fine. <laughs> if Xbox 360 homebrew becomes a thing over the next couple of years, which I fucking hope it does, I'm getting physical releases of every single game that I had on the arcade. Every single one, I want physical releases of everything. I want all the DLC that might have been on there, every update, I want all of it. I want all of it, <laughs> you know? And I think it'd be cool. I'd love to one day just have a wall of like a hundred different arcade uh, Xbox 360 repro games. Um, that'd be sick. That'd be really cool. And if someone's working on that or knows about that, let me know. That'd be great. Down in the comments. Here's the one that I didn't realise had a physical release until maybe two weeks ago. War World. War World Tactical Command. Um, or oh, Tactical Combat, sorry. It's a mech. It's a mech game. Um, it's an arena-style mech game in the vein of, like... Mech salt, I guess. Um, it's fine. It's fine. I'm all baffled by the fact that of all the arcade games that there were, that one had a physical release. Not Abyss Odyssey. Not Section Eight Prejudice. Not Self Factor Psychokinetic Wars. None of that. War World. Okay. Um, it's a solid five out of ten. It's not bad. Because I'm not in that mindset of is there anything under a 7 is shit. No. It's a solid 5 out of 10. It's fun for a while and that's all it really needs to be. Okay. Here's the granddaddy of indie games. Uh, this I have been kind of sitting on and debating on getting the new version. Um, the new version came out on Switch and PS5 and Xbox Series X and all that shit. Um, it's Braid. Now, Braid had a gorgeous art style. It had a gorgeous cover um, on the uh, on the arcade. It looked amazing. It was just a broken hourglass, and it was amazing. This looks like Limbo, which sucks, but I found this in a charity shop for, like, a pound, so I was like, yeah, okay. Uh, minor problem. There's no... <laughs> 
there's no wheel or there's no code to let me use this version of the game, which is great. Definitely a big fan of that. If they do a physical release of the anniversary edition, I'll probably get that. But yeah, Braid's, Braid's cool. Braid's a very solid um, game. Unique is what I'd call it. Uh, it took that concept of making indie games like Limbo, like Trials, like Explosion Man, like Pac-Man Championship Edition. It took making shorter games for cheaper and kind of ran with it and went, Yo, look, profitable. It's profitable. Isn't that great? And people went, great. <laughs> the Braid, and in turn, to a massive degree, the Xbox Live Marketplace are the reason that indies exist. Um, they used to do the summer, of in uh, the summer of Arcade, which was awesome. You get, like, two games for free or for cheap as shit, or they'd release two and they'd be amazing. Um... And I still stand by, I've still, I've, one of them is still my fourth favourite game of all time. I just beat it today, again, and it's amazing, but we'll get to that. Um, the final home stretch. Switch releases. Um, toy, toy Soldiers. Yeah, uh, kind of a tactical tower defence sort of dealio. It's okay, um... I'm not a huge tower defense guy. I don't like tower defense uh, as a general rule. But to a physical release of a game I had on Xbox 360 back in the day. Yeah, okay. I haven't actually played that version yet, which is not great. And I don't think it, inco it includes Cold War, which is kind of shit. Would have been nice if it had, if it had been Toy Soldiers and Cold War. But um, yeah, Cold War. No, but I have Cold War already. Um, in fact, I only had Cold War, and I've actually had the original Toy Soldiers. So uh, that's a that's a slight novel here for you. Okay, uh, not you. Clash of Heroes. Now I do have the uh, DS version of Clash of Heroes. I showed that to you last week. Um, this is flat out one of my favourite arcade games and favourite puzzlers ever. It's great. Um, it's a lot of fun, especially in the um, multiplayer mode. The multiplayer mode's actually really solid. It's just kind of matching. It's a it's a puzzle battler. I've never really heard of anything like that. I'm sure there are. I'm sure there are games out there. Like I think there was a puzzle quest on the uh, Xbox Live Arcade actually that had stuff like that. I think it was Gubak Tricks or something like that. Don't quote me. But um, this version is the definitive edition. Comes with all the DLC that was on the uh, Xbox Live Arcade. The DS version doesn't have that, but what the DS version does have is local play. I don't think this has local play, which is lame. There's one to four players online. Explain that. <laughs> but Clash of Heroes is, is a good degree of fun. I, I really enjoy it. I think it's very solid. Um, I think it's, uh, I don't like the artwork. On this version as much. I think the artwork on the DS version is actually a lot better. Fiona at the front looks a bit 2D. They looked more 3D back in the day, but here we are. Been playing a lot of this recently. Um, it's fun. It's fun. Go play this. Go play this. Um, I shouldn't have bought the limited. I shouldn't have bought the limited run version. Um, <laughs> should have. Shouldn't have bought the limited run version. I should have just bought it for 25 quid and came out over here. But here we are. Okay, the last two, the Mega Two. Scott Pilgrim. I mean, I did a whole Scott Pilgrim video. Um, if you haven't seen it, go watch it. This game is fucking amazing. Um, I, uh, my wife got me the pin set for Christmas, which was awesome. Um, I bought myself the Switch case, the cards. Um, I bought the uh, two key rings. This comes with like a Clash of Demon Head um, ticket. There's the lenticular car collectible card which is cool as balls and a fucking thick ass instruction manual which is even better it's a very cool side scroller it's also a game that i coveted for years because i had it i bought it i bought it physically uh, i bought it on download oh, i might prefer that artwork it looks better yeah okay let's switch it out let's switch it out but yeah i bought it originally uh, back when the movie came out, cause I saw that in cinema, fell in love. Then they released this side-scrolling beat 'em up. Now I hate side-scrolling beat 'em ups with a passion. Oh, that is better looking, isn't it? Better looking. 
they released this side-scrolling beat-em-up, and I was terrible at it. I'm still terrible at it, even now, I, I, I can't play through Scott Pilgrim <laughs> without dying too much. Um, I just can't get into it. Can't get into it in that capacity, but I really like this game. It, it's one of those ones where it's like, I'm shit at it, but I know it's my fault. Um, unlike most Souls-likes, where it's just bad game design, and I will die on that hill. Um, yeah, solid game. Heartily recommend. It's not my favourite. It's not the favourite I was talking about. That would be Dust. Dust and Lazy and Tail. I will freely admit, I bought the vinyl for this off of eBay two days ago. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have done that, but here we are. Um, yeah, it had the original artwork for the uh, for the game. Very sombre game. Music's very solid. Um, there's a... There's a uh, music sheet book that I'm looking at, and I know that sounds insane, but it looks really cool. I'll probably buy it in the next week or so, because I can. But yeah, Dust. Uh, Dust is just gorgeous. Its artwork's amazing. It's made by one guy, which is Dean Bowdrill. I cannot sing Dust and Lazy Tales praises enough. I will probably tag him on Twitter. Um, and yes, it's Twitter, Elon. Um... I will probably tag him on Twitter because I'm going to gush about this game for the next five minutes. Okay, where to begin? I bought this game back in 2012. Or more accurately, I bought it in January 2023, 2013. So I originally got um, the trial. So back in the day, you could just demo basically any Xbox arcade game you wanted. You just pop the trial on. You could play like up to a certain point, And then you could buy it. Now, I did that. I downloaded the trial. I popped it in. I played the ever-loving crap out of the trial, actually. And I was like, wow, this is really good. This game's amazing. Plays really well. It's funny. It's well written. It's well voice acted. It looks amazing. It's gorgeous. All of that jazz. The trial had a particularly funny moment where you're fighting through uh, a later stage of the game that I won't spoil, um, involving a graveyard, and you come across a mansion. And you are about to go in after defeating this big dude with a shield, and it's like, ah, sorry, Dust, uh, sorry, Fidget, that's the end of the game. And Fidget's like, what? What do you mean? How's that? What? That makes no sense. Oh, maybe if they bought the game, that'd be great. <laughs> and that's... That has lived rent-free in my head for about 12 years. I still love it. I still think it's great. It's so funny. And my love of this game cannot be understated. I love Dust. I will probably be doing a Dust video down the line. The plan is to get the indie box version, that sheet music book, and uh, the collector's edition that Limited Run did of this a couple of years ago. I don't need it. I don't need the collector's edition, but I like this I like this game that much that I want it. It's like um, back in the day I was going to get the Stubbs the Zombie Collector's Edition, but um, I didn't because shipping it over from America would have been like a hundred quid, <laughs> which was not worth it. Um, the dust is so fucking good. It's got one of those really poignant moments as well. It's got a few poignant moments, but it, it's principal poignant moment for me. And kind of the reason why I picked it up again after a year was I was watching somebody play it. And they get to this moment where they're like, oh, this next bit's about to be really sad. And I was like, I think I'll buy the game. So I bought the game and I played through it. And we get to this town called Mud Pot, which is full of frog people. And you encounter this guy or this, this boy and his father is dying. He's very unwell. He's in a lot of pain. You never speak to him. You never speak to the dad and you then rush off. You then rush off with Dust, Fidget and the Blade of Ara. Blade of Ara. <laughs> um, you rush off and you try and activate the uh, healing springs that are around the village because they've been cut off. You get to the uh, water goddess who's defending or more accurately has cut off the water in, in an attempt to starve out or uh, drought out an enemy. Uh, on the surface, only once you've beaten some sense into her, quite literally, she goes, "Oh shit, oh shit, I've been I've been making people suffer more than I've actually been helping. So, what do I do?" <laughs> um, so she starts letting water out again. Water flows out, and you rush back. 
you rush back only to find out he died. The guy died and it's this very horrendous moment of the main character beating himself up. Um, the voice acting on him is astoundingly good. Same with Fidget, um, who is this. She's also the one on the front cover. Or at least my variant of the front cover that I prefer to use. Uh, she's kind of the sidekick. She's where a lot of the comedy comes from. She's just a lot of fun. Yeah. And that moment has stuck in my brain for over... Over... 14 years. Dust has never been shifted from its place as my fourth favourite game. So, games have been knocked off that top five, easily. Um, the top five originally had Halo 2 on it, but that's been knocked off. Uh, that's now in sixth, um, actually. Mass Effect 3 took its place. Um, but then Triangle Strategy took the place of um, Three Houses. That took the place of Journey. Um, a lot of these games get shifted out, but Dust has stood fast. It went, nah, number four. My, my spot. Brutal Legend naturally went, I'm taking the top spot from Halo 2 like 15 years ago, and I'm not moving. Ever. <laughs> um, the only way they could do it is if they made a sequel that's better than the first one. Good luck. Um, good luck with that. <laughs> most of them, most of the cast are dead. Um, well, they're not, they're not dead, but they're certainly not around uh, to act in that capacity anymore. Moving on. That's it for my physical Xbox 360 arcade games. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed it. I know this has been a surprisingly long video. But um, with any luck, next week's video will be substantially shorter. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to ramble. I wanted to ramble about all of these games on a platform that kind of shaped my tastes in gaming quite a significant degree and uh yeah so uh that's me done for another week that is me signing off and i hope you have a good weekend and a good week in general and uh make sure to like and subscribe goodbye